Hello, I am on Minot State campus, um, finished class and meetings for the day, and now we're going to enjoy Knotstock and Potstock. Knotstock is a music and arts festival hosted here at Minot State campus, so they have guest speakers, guest artists. There's also like, you can print, like screen, not screen print, mm, I don't know, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, gonna go to some of the different events, take you along with me. First thing I'm gonna do, Prairie Sky Breads has their um, trailer here. <laughs> and I need to get some coffee and some food. So that is gonna be stop one. Right, food is polished off. I've got my vanilla cold brew with pumpkin spice. First time having a pumpkin spiced coffee drink. I, I'm, I'm a mint girl, I think. Um, I don't know how I feel about pumpkin spice. It's good, but it still kind of weirds me out. Anyway, at noon in Anna Nicole Nelson Hall in Old Main, they're doing an artist presentation. So I have a couple minutes. I'm going to get a seat there and hopefully show you the artists that they're presenting. Welcome to Knotstock. How are you guys all doing? Good. All right. All right. Great. So thank you for coming. Um, this year, we're really honored to have Peter Zaholski as one of our Knotstock guests. Zaholski's wide ranging practice encompasses an array of media and genres, including poster design, drawings, mail art, photographs, murals, prints, digital art installations, and public performances. In 1998, he established Labor Camp, an ongoing art project that celebrates the beauty, beauty and dignity of labor through visual art, graphic design, and public actions. On March 24th in 2020, he started the COVID-19 Labor Camp Report Project, and that's a series of 225 drawings, posters that you saw encompassing the outer wall of the Art Center. Um, it's on display through October 14th, so come back and check it out again. Uh, if you get the chance. So Peter is printing live at, in the Northwest Art Center through Saturday, gonna be making some large banners, posters, um, and following the presentation tomorrow, he's gonna be a march around campus, uh, in which campus and community members are invited to carry a large banner, protest style. Um, please welcome Peter Zaholski. Thank you for coming over uh, uh, to to see me, and thank you for this opportunity to um, just to be able to talk to you uh, about the work, about the ideas. Um, I really appreciate the, the time and the attention, and I just love being part of this amazing event. Nonstop is something that I've never experienced before, but uh, Victorian, if you will, aesthetic of these uh, tintype photographs. But the pure is an interesting thing about these three here. Except in that context, you're supposed to answer that I am a criminal, this is the labor camp, and I'm here to reform through labor. There's something about the way these questions resonate very differently in different contexts that really did strike me. Then there's these plates. The last big project before the pandemic and the report consisted for me trying to um, find a way to aesthetically work myself into existing design of the plates. So the challenge and the kind of uh, um, joyful experience of beginning by understanding the aesthetic, understanding the intention of somebody who designed these plates in the first place, and engaging in what I think of as a kind of a collaborative process, a duet, if you will. And then there's supposed to come to this extreme historical phenomenon when it occurred. That's me in the basement, uh, making one of the very early drawings. Uh, but the first drawing that I made was really just a, a response to the fact that this incredible thing was happening and we were all 
various fragments of text that I ended up calling news shrapnel, because like shrapnel, bits and pieces of information would just get stuck in my head. And you can see that list of these uh, fragments of language uh, that often I would actually write out on these little cards. And when beginning to ideate for the new project, I would just sort of lay them out on the table and look for resonances, combinations of ideas, start sketching, um, and develop a kind of visual language that um, felt appropriate to the moment. So sometimes it was just the beginning, the beginning was the pieces of text, other times it was images. I'll talk about this a little later. So lots of these cards, the ones that are crossed out, crossed out are the ones that were already used in previous drawings. Lots of sketches, small three by five inches cards. Um, and then after that, maybe when 10 o'clock rolled around in the morning, I had to commit to something and just start drawing. All of these report drawings are made the same way using this refillable um, Kurataka pen. Um, so you pour the ink in the handle of this plastic uh, brush and you don't have to dip the brush in the ink. The ink just sort of flows to the bristle. This is the first time I actually used this tool. Somebody gave me one of those some months before and on that first, during that first session, I didn't know exactly um, you know, what to do, and I picked this brand new tool, and I thought, I'll just experiment with that. So I would make these drawings, post them on Instagram, and move on to the next one. 125 days, so that's eight months of staying with this project, hundreds of cups of coffee, and thousands of hours. Archive of these, um, of these uh, images along with- heard him explain his work. Now let's go see it in the gallery. He said that he does not see his work as political art, rather art about politics. Um, this labor camp exhibit is his, oh, I forgot the word. He just taught us a German word, Zeit something, um, that basically is being a witness to the times. So he's saying this exhibit is, yeah, him witnessing what was going on in the pandemic. I'll be honest, as someone who has a quantitative social science brain and not a critical cultural brain, I don't see the difference between saying art about politics or political art. I just, I don't know enough about it to be able to see those distinctions. Um, maybe other people can. <laughs> so we are at the little KMSU booth. We have got Cole, who's a graduate of the ProCom Pro program, and Derek, our department technical supervisor and instructor for ProCom. Um, do you guys have, I don't know, you want to plug anything or? Uh, we're here at Nostock today, the, probably the biggest art festival on Minus State campus. There's a lot you can do. There's uh, live screen printing for t-shirts, sweatshirts, sweaters. Um, I don't know what else they do. We also have pot stock. They have, uh, you can do a lot of pottery. You can spin the wheel and create your own uh, masterpiece. And then uh, we're just here playing music and we got uh, stuff to promote our program. Yay! And this is illegal. <laughs> yeah, it's like this beaver, we're not technically allowed to use this beaver, but, but once we were told about it, like, we just, we didn't care. We, we just came handing them out. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to like plug or talk about? Consider a career in professional communication. Just the fact that we have all these different programs shows there's really a variety of things you can go into. And uh, in this day and age, there's so much communication. We're basically in a communication economy. So any kind of industry you want to work in, there is going to be a need for someone to be in communication. Sometimes people uh, look at communications degrees and they think it's like an easy thing or like a liberal arts type of thing, which it, to an extent it is, but it also is going to give you a huge variety of career opportunities in the future. So any path you want to go is going to have a need for a communications person. And just looking at some of them, we have, you know, production, journalism, yeah. public relations, PR, social media, social sports media. Com. and sports I dig com. this one right here. <laughs> and that's just like a smattering of the variety of things you can go into and specialize in. So one of the exciting career for communication. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs>
that was the tiniest snippet of not stock again it is two and a half days full of events I did not go to the musical performances or poetry performances. There was also a theater workshop being put on. So tons of events. Definitely recommend if you're in the area to check it out next year. Let me know in the comments below what you think about pumpkin spiced coffees. Is a latte better than a cold brew? I know some people like the chai with like the pumpkin cream cold foam. Let me know what I should try next. Wonderful day. Keep dreaming out loud. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.